All right. Uh, when stocks are up, uh, people tend not to worry about the impact of a trade war. They think we'll be short-lived, and that's clearly the market sentiment right now. But for folks uh, looking at retirement or close to retirement, all of a sudden they're fearing a trade war, buffeting their hard-earned savings and money. Then what to do? To Barron's associate publisher, best-selling author Jack Otter. Jack, what do you tell folks? Well, today we're not seeing it, right, Neil? Jo right. Jobs number was great, and even though the unemployment rate ticked up, I think that's actually good news because it means more people are coming into the workforce. Generally, what I tell people is, you just don't. Know, and I know this is. I know you hate this cop out, Neil, but I do it to you every week. You don't know what's going to happen. Generally, in fact, unanimously, economists say trade war is not good for the economy. Net, net, you lose jobs, GDP goes down. But who knows? Maybe this is a brilliant poker game. Maybe we'll end up getting a better deal. Uh, so I say generally the answer to that question depends on whether you like Donald Trump or not. And you should not make retirement investment decisions based on what you think of the president. So look at it this way. If we do have a trade war, if the market does take a hit, we know certain sectors will do better than others. Small caps generally have less exposure to sales overseas, so they tend to outperform. And we've already seen that big time in the market. Uh, the small cap index is way up, while the general market is about flat on the year. Uh, so that's one place to hide. And you know me, I, I like to take risks sometimes. So emerging markets, for instance, are doing pretty badly in the past few months as we've gotten a stronger dollar rising interest rates. But over the long term, I think emerging markets are a very interesting play. And if you use a strong, strong dollar to buy those stocks right now, that's an advantage. So make sure you have some exposure there. But diversified portfolio, once you've got that, try not to think about the trade war and the other things. Because over the long term, if you try to make bets based on what you think is going to happen, you'll always be a step behind. Well, there is that. You know, I, I also think that it's not as black and white or as simple as it used to be in the past when it came to trade you know, back and forth. For one thing, while this is unique in that China has responded uh, with, with uh, intended tariffs of its own, unlike Japan during the Reagan era that did not, um, there are alternatives. Americans will, will have an option either not to buy those specific products in question or to, to seek them out elsewhere. Um, that doesn't mean there's a robust market for, for all those alternatives, but more options than we know, and, and hence the effect on our economy might be less than we fear. What do you make of that? Well, I would say yes, but. And the but is that the global supply chain is far more integrated than it was back when, say, you know, Japan was selling a TV for less than we could make it. So right now, it, you know, a, a car can, can be in China, it can be in South Carolina, it can be in Mexico before it hits your dealer's lot. And so do you hurt that South Carolina factory worker because something that's going on in China or Mexico makes the parts more expensive? Uh, the iPhone, uh, so a lot of the parts are made by Foxconn in China. Soon they might be made by Foxconn in Wisconsin, which would be a good thing. But maybe the glass is coming from Japan, but it was invented by Corning in upstate New York. So you, you just can't tell. And I think a lot of the, the unforeseen consequences of a trade war are where the damage will come. You know, Mario Gabelli, a fund manager, is upstairs at the Barron's offices right now chatting with a colleague of mine. And um, he says that he thinks a lot of this is actually priced into the market already, where we know, for instance, um, you know, a, a company that uses a lot of steel, their prices are going to go up. Well, that stock is probably already down by now, so you hmm. can't play that. But it's, it's the things where we, we get caught by surprise, where you might see some real volatility in the market. You know, if you wanted to be a real optimistic person about this and see the very, very, very big, big, big picture, Jack, you could make, if the goal longer term is to get countries to really think long and hard, our own included, by the way, because we, we, we put significant tariffs on, you know, uh, light trucks and all coming from abroad. But yep. if we all, I'm not saying zeroed them out, but, but made them drastically less across the globe, net, net, that could be quite a constructive development and, and could change the equation going forward to sort of a global free and unfettered market for goods and services. What do you think of that? Absolutely. Uh, net, net, that would be far better for the economy. And it's what economists say is the dream, so that every country does what it does best. Here's the problem with that. If you are a low-skilled American, working in a job that in another country they can do a lot cheaper, in a world with zero barriers to entry, that job goes away. And that product will be made in another country. 
So while I, I agree theoretically, I agree 100 percent, getting there could be painful, but it would certainly be good for the stock market and it would be good for anyone who's working in a job that's hard to do in another country. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great goal, but it, but it would be painful. And it says that in order to do that, we need to work right from early education uh, to make sure that we have people who are qualified for the jobs that are likely to stay here. And realize those are better jobs. You make more money in those jobs. We'll have a stronger economy. But again, for somebody who's been doing something for decades and might be resistant to more training or we're just not efficient enough to get them the training they need, that's a very painful adjustment process. And it speaks to the, the broader issue with, with all this trade issue. Free trade is great. In, in terms of across the board, everyone benefits a little bit, and the people who get hurt by free trade get hurt badly. So in other words, the benefits are spread broadly, the pain is very acute in small areas. Well, I still see the half full glass, young man. You're depressing me with your <laughs> view of the world here, but uh, no, we shall see. You're right, there's a lot of unknowns yet, uh, but Jack Goddard, very good seeing you again. Good seeing you, Neil.